Welcome back everyone to ABG Investor Days. My name is Henrik Inse and I'm an equity research analyst here at ABG. With me now, I have the CEO of Seafire, Johan Benersten, here to present the company. Please go ahead. Thank you, Henrik. Uh, nice to be here again. Uh, Seafire, uh, we're a um, company specialized on uh, acquisition of SMEs, uh, mainly companies 50 to 200 million sec in revenue. We're operating in, uh, in niche markets. We have two business segments, it's products and industrial components. Um, we have an industrial approach where we focus on, on uh, growth and improve, um, improved profits. It's with, with um, more private, private equity-like business model with key financial target, business plan and steady improvement and sales academy. We also have a, a clear view on succession plans and that's meaning that we we recruit new CEOs after the succession of the entrepreneur where we, uh, from which we buy the company from. And that's more to how to, to adapt our model uh, on the companies we own. Um, we have uh, made 14 acquisitions so far, uh, 12 still in portfolio, um, EV, EBITDA, multiple of less than six. If you see down to the left here, uh, we have quite high CAGR of um, almost 10% over the years. Uh, it's uh, it's, it's um, uh, prior our acquisition, but also uh, during our holding time. Um, uh, so we're a, bi a, a bit above uh, 1 billion sec in, uh, in sales. Our EBITDA margin is uh, a, a bit uh, higher than 10%. This year we have a minus 4% organic growth, uh, last year 12%. So we have had some, some negative impact of, of um, tougher uh, market conditions in some companies. Uh, this year uh, we have sold um, or li liquidated two companies, it's Linguacom and Heden. Uh, so now we are t 12 companies in the portfolio. I will come back to, to uh, that in a moment. The team, I'm uh, the CEO and founder of Seafire. I founded this uh, in 16 and um, take it from, from there. Uh, my background is from private equity uh, within Capman. Jakob Persson has been uh, almost three years um, as CFO. Um, have an experience from Ambea and PVC. And, and then uh, Anders Martinsson joined in September. Uh, he has a background from Indutrade and BA Group. A very uh, good recruitment, taking care of in the, the industrial uh, component business segment. Uh, so now we have a full fresh team for, for taking Seafire to the next, next level. Uh, 2023 has been a quite busy year. Uh, on top of, of uh, uh, this, we have made one acquisition in January, February, uh, Burupanan uh, heating systems, uh, accumulator tanks for, for customers like uh, Bosch, IVT, uh, Tech, uh, Thermia and, and others. Uh, and also we made a um, uh, list um, well, to, to the main market, Nasdaq Stockholm, uh, May 11th. Um, if you look at the financial performance, we have a negative growth of minus 4%. Uh, we had a very strong uh, Q1 with 14% growth and then uh, two quarters uh, with negative growth. Uh, we see this as a result from decreased uh, demand in um, free subsidiaries, uh, mainly within building construction and cons consumer related products. And now we see a clear positive trend in the Q3 um, this year. Come back to that. Generally, we can see that we have um, uh, increased cost in the, in, in the organization, uh, and both the salaries, but also uh, inflation. And it's also that we are having negative dependence on, on currencies. Um, so, so we see that exchange rate really uh, hit us uh, margin-wise. Uh, th those days, with, with strong dollar and euro, we were quite hard to, to still increase uh, the prices. Um, so so uh, we, we're working quite hard now to reduce the pushing pricing, but also getting more, uh, well, grow, grow the business a bit more so, so we can, can take care of, of the, the reduced um, uh, profits. Uh, this year we also made a restatement of the um, solid engineer um, uh, acquisitions. Um, it's an IFRS effect uh, that, that had a negative effect uh, a year ago, uh, minus 30 million in EBITDA. Now we added back um, 
um, two thirds of that uh, in, in this restatement. And also, we made a liquidation uh, of uh, Hedean. We sold the assets. This is the first company I acquired um, when I started Seafire uh, seven years ago. Sold that to a can can Canadian partner. Uh, and also, we, uh, we uh, unfortunately had to, to put uh, Linguacom in uh, liquidation due to a uh, fraud. Um, um, and, and this has a ne negative effect of minus 35 million. Um, actually, the plan this year was to divest those companies. Uh, Hedian was as, as planned, but, but of course, Linguacom was not uh, as planned uh, as it happened. Uh, I think the most important for us uh, was the balance sheet restructuring. Uh, last year, we made... Um, an issue of 300 million uh, SEC, uh, issue of shares uh, to replace a bond, very costly bond, um, with a bank financing. Uh, we had interest rates uh, or interest, interest cost of about 75 million a year with a bond. Uh, now we're less or about 20 million with, uh, with um, uh, bank financing. Uh, so I think that that's the most important, so we can, can take care of the, the cash flow uh, and invest that in, in the business and also make acquisition from it. Um, also, we made a tax, ref uh, tax deferral um, in, in September uh, in order to increase our available cash. So now we have 150 million, and also that will, will also mean that we decrease the net debt EBITDA uh, to about two. Uh, those tax deferrals go, shall be paid uh, in four years, so I think we have time to take care of those um, um, th th this debt as well. Uh, so now I, th I believe it, it, this was my plan to get the platform in place, uh, one billion in sales, um, about 10 percent EBITDA margin, so we can actually uh, grow the business with uh, the cash flow we have, uh, with, with um, uh, making acquisition from the cash flow we have. Um, and also made uh, the Nasdaq listening uh, quite costly and, and time consuming. So I think we spent uh, 50 million sec on this. And now I think we have, have time to, to really focus on the business um, and develop the companies. If you look at the Q3, um, we had um, last year adjusted EBITDA of 21. Uh, Burupanan added 3 more million. And then we have minus five uh, million in uh, from the subsidiaries. It's mainly uh, building constructions uh, where we saw uh, see um, a softer market, and and that's not just for us. It's it's uh, total market, I think. Um, so we ended up in 19 million. Um, also, we we have a, a very intense uh, programs in our portfolio companies, uh, when we transform sales teams and digital strategy. Uh, in a handful of companies, uh, very many companies, when we acquire them, they, especially in the industrial components, they don't really have the sales team in place. Uh, for example, uh, Åkerstedt, uh, when we acquired that company four years ago, um, they had um, not a full FTE on sales. Now we have three, and we're taking market share. Uh, growing more than 40% this year, very profitable company. And that's this, it takes time to, to get um, the results from it. And, and the COVID, of course, has not uh, helped us uh, to get that in place, but I think we're, we're now full set for, for the coming years. Also, ISO certification digitalization project, projects we have done in, in a number of companies, which didn't have this in, in the past. Uh, and also succession from owners, um, that, that we actually have made succession in all companies except from, from one. Uh, so we have the, the team uh, we would like to, to uh, build the companies with in place. If you look at the industrial component, um, we saw a minus 7% uh, organic uh, growth, uh, minus 7%. It's mainly uh, two companies, Kempo and, and Dofab, uh, building construction. Um, we have one uh, growing very, uh, two companies growing more than 20%, uh, Åkerstedt and uh, Bara Mineraler. Uh, it's stable gross margin. Uh, we see uh, in, the, in the different companies, uh, landscaping market, that's Bara Mineraler. Um, very strong development. I will come back to that the next slide. Uh, very long term, strong outlook due to sustainability and climate change. Electrification market with this Bure and uh, Peximec, they're doing very well. Um, and also we see um, 
a strong uh, long-term outlook, even though, as uh, Niebe pointed out last week, uh, we see the, those government grants uh, that uh, um, come and go um, really disturb the market in the long, but in the long term we see a very positive market condition uh, in this segment. Uh, building supplies, it's Dofab and uh, and Fergin. Uh, Fergin is a supplier of industrial paint. Uh, they have mainly uh, uh, industrial companies like VCE and, and uh, Epiroc as uh, customers, but also some uh, to buildings uh, or building supplies. And that's a very soft market, minus 60% year to date. Uh, we see also there where interest rates reduce the short-term investments um, from, from households and, and also real estate owners. And this is compared to the so solar panel, mar panel market where, where it has been a very strong order book, but now it's very empty. So we see the same, the same uh, pattern actually for those companies. Long-term, strong outlook. Uh, industrial components, um, and that's automotive, uh, like Toralgen and also uh, Fergin, stable development. Uh, we have Scania for Toralgen as the main customer. Um, they had a good Q3 and also a long-term or 12 months um, forecast, which is quite strong uh, for, for, uh, for Scania. So I think it's, this is sta stable business. Uh, Bottom mineral is, is I, th I believe, our top um, or our, our best acquisition so far. Um, this, I think, we have um, potential to, to grow it to half a billion sec in a number of years. Uh, we grow in this year with about 35%, uh, double uh, the profit level, uh, EBIT margin of 20%. Um, this company has been around for more than 30 years, um, focusing on sustainable products. And of course, with, uh, with the climate change and sus uh, sustainability focus, uh, this is, um, of course, a very strong market uh, out there for this company. And we are mainly only focused on, on uh, the Swedish market. It's based in Bara, southern part of Sweden. Um, we have very unique products. It's clay for horticulture. Uh, and and um, uh, the other is, is uh, pumice, uh, Hecla pumice, which is uh, used for rain beds. On top of that, uh, the company has a number of products for, for uh, the city, city planning and landscaping. It's bricks for, for, uh, for, for the ground uh, and, and other kind of, of um, prefab brick uh, products like um, and that it is sold for the Swedish market, and we see a growing demand for this kind of products where you actually leave the concrete um, 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 kind of material that you use uh, instead using uh, bricks, which has, um, of course, a high cost, but long term it ha it's more sustainable and um, lifetime cost is also lower. So, very strong uh, development uh, in this company, and uh, we will take it. Um, uh, to develop it further, increase the sales and also uh, the products and, and uh, the knowledge base that we, we have created so far. If you look at the product companies, uh, there are five companies in this, uh, four companies uh, uh, remaining in this uh, segment. Uh, we saw um, almost uh, plus minus zero, minus one percent in organic growth. Um, we had a quite early impact last year in this segment when we saw the interest rate cut, the customer demand. Uh, Nordbutiker has now, during 15 weeks, growing uh, business. Compared to last year, more than 50 to 20 percent is uh, electrical vehicles. Um, and, and also Luda Farm and Oppo also see um, a growing demand. Um, we see that, that uh, last year the, the customers put on hold, especially resellers and distributors. Uh, so it was a, a slowdown uh, because they reduced the stock. And now we are now going to the to a, a positive sign of sa of improvement of sales, uh, also for those companies. Uh, we have done quite a lot of cost-effective measures in those companies, so we're still having the same profit as last year, um, even though the sales are are a bit down. Um, so, um, uh, I believe that we, we actually could increase the, um, the profits uh, the coming year. Uh, hopefully, the, the SEC, uh, SEC value for, for USD and, and also Euro will be a bit uh, better uh, because uh, those companies import in dollar, especially. Uh, and now the dollar is, uh, is a, a bit weaker, so I think we're 
could actually have a better uh, improved margins uh, from a weaker dollar. Um, as right now, it's, it's the case, but I uh, hope to, to get it uh, a bit more next year. Also, we work, of course, with um, reductions of, uh, from pricing from vendors. We see that China vendors reduce the prices 15, 10, 10 to 15%, um, but it's mitigated a bit by the weak exchange rate, but I think we can do even more there. If you look at the share, uh, we are down uh, significantly, minus 68 percent, and, and that's, um, of course, uh, very sad to see. To see. Um, but still, I think uh, the most important that is that we have made a refinancing of the, um, of the debt, so we have um, uh, had a good uh, cash flow in the Q3, and it's still improving in Q4 so far, so I believe that we are self-funded on, on this level, um, and also we have a very good headroom for, for um, uh, the, the covenant for the bank. Um, also, we see that um, Kratos is the biggest owner and protector for sacring has um, its number two uh, increased to 16%. So I believe that we have a, what to say, washout from, from investors that came in, uh, especially in the new issue of shares a year ago. Um, um, so, so I believe it's, it's, we have a good owner list, um, even though we are a quite small company. Um, Some outlook, um, as I said, a very busy year. Uh, a lot of projects um, have been, been accomplished. Um, we closed the, the refinancing, um, minus 50, 50 million in uh, interest rates, in, in cost for, for interest. Um, we have listed on the stock exchange, uh, the main market. Uh, that was quite... Um, Quite, I think it's, it's really great value, uh, but it's costly and, and of course takes a lot of time. We saw that, that 2022 was a very good market for very many companies. We had low costs, uh, inflation hadn't, hadn't really uh, hit us, um, and still um, there were some uh, bottlenecks that were released. So the Q2 last year was uh, fantastic. Uh, now we are more of a run rate of about 10 million uh, in EBITDA level each month. Um, and, and now we are, have done quite a lot of work in our companies with uh, transformation of the sales teams, ISO certification, and, and also some cost measures. Um, we see um, quite good level um, on um, the market, size, uh, market side, um, and that was seen in the Q3, even though the building materials are a bit soft. Uh, focus now, uh, the coming year, is stabilization of sales and improved profits and um, of, of gradually uh, reduce the leverage to establish headroom for uh, more acquisitions. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Let's move on to some questions. If we start off by looking at uh, the current portfolio of companies that you have, uh, what would you say are some of the biggest opportunities to improve operational efficiencies uh, in the current portfolio? I believe that, I mean, we have, since our first investment and all the investments, we have added about 25 sales reps in the total group, uh, if you look at prior acquisition and, and what we have today. And that's really, I think, we, we hope to get some uh, leverage on that investment that we made, that we have more front end um, uh, personnel that, that uh, work with, with sales and taking market share and also business development. So I think that, that that's the, the, the most important. And for example, Nubitiki, they had uh, one guy uh, working with e-commerce prior acquisition, now we are six. Um, and and uh, the organization is down from 42 to 27. So we really made a trans transformation. Also, that's, that's um, uh, Oppo, Solid, Luda Farm. We have made all kind of this, this um, transformation. I think that's the, the, the most important uh, for us. And of course, in a tougher market, you can say, that, okay, if, you, we, if we hadn't done that kind of transformation, what had the sales been then? And I think that has been a, a more negative impact, but it's hard to say. Uh, but I think it's, it's really to, to drive the sales. And we see Åkerstedt, for example, that we recruited now three sales reps. And now we see a growth of 35% uh, this year. It's a small company, but 25% EBITDA margin. So it has a very profit, um, well, um, 
um, all the way down. Uh, so I believe we will see more of that. Um, so I think that that's the, the best opportunity. Uh, if, if you look at the total group, we see Bora Mineral, for example. It's, it's um, I mean, the market uh, potentially is perhaps some billions sec for that company in, in Sweden. And if we have just uh, 100 million or 120 million this year in sales, I think we, of course, that could be uh, um, the, a, a very strong uh, contributor to our um, performance. Um, Mm. Uh, this year, mm. or or All next right. year, or the, co the coming years. Yeah. 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 All right. And um, looking on the M and A side of things, then Seafire is fundamentally an M and A driven company, yes. right? So, what are your thoughts going forward there? You've obviously gone a bit slower on the acquisitions lately. Worked down the debt a bit. Uh, what's the outlook there? I mean, wh what we're looking for, I mean, uh, I think that the two main things is, is one is that we are looking more for add-ons um, to, to add businesses uh, close to the companies we have and making cluster out of it so we get more synergies or, or market knowledge, I would say, um, um, so we can actually take advantage of that. Uh, the other thing is the industrial components, the industrial side. So I think we will grow, they have more in common. Um, and and uh, that's, I think, our focus to, to find um, niched uh, industrial uh, companies with not sub suppliers or, or like perhaps Trogen, it's, it's actually the only sub supplier we have. Uh, the other are are more own products or mm. systems and that they, they sell to, to customers. So I think it's, it's, uh, that, that's also, I think, a fundamental part for us is to have a really added value to the customer. Uh, so a niche, niche player with, with own products uh, rather than um, um, a uh, well, sub-supplier that we actually can be exchanged every day, uh, mm. so to say. So I think it's... it's um, um, the focus and, and we are constant pace. I think we we're looking to add uh, two to three companies a year uh, and on top of our hopefully organic growth and imp improved profits. I think that will be a very well fu fuel the, uh, the profits and, and hopefully also the share price over time. Mm. You, m you mentioned uh, that you're maybe focusing a bit more on the industrial components segment. What, what does that mean for, for the companies uh, in the product uh, segment? Uh, you, you've uh, lost two companies uh, in that segment this year. Um, do you plan on divesting any other businesses uh, or is that it? I mean, uh, the companies we divested, it was more of a hidden was very small, five million in sales. So, so it's it's to take care of a problem that that isn't a problem, but could be a problem, and uh, that will be more costly. And Linguacom, we didn't see um, any any uh, with, with uh, AI and and um, uh, fewer immigrants, we didn't see that business model. Well, should be a part because we don't believe in, in the in the company in, or, or that market. So I think that that was um, also the two companies we acquired very early. We hadn't done them today. Uh, so so it's more of a of a streamlined portfolio uh, to see. Okay, the companies we have uh, is what we would like to have. Um, and uh, the product side, it, it's harder to find uh, good companies with with. Um, um, I mean, I think one out of ten is, is uh, in the deal flow we have is a product company, and uh, nine out of ten are industrial. Uh, mm. So, so I think it's also that to find those niche companies uh, that have an added value and, and a, well, a final product to the customer um, is of course in interesting when you can find those. But it, it's harder. I mean, Upo is which within eyewear, it's uh, almost eighty percent gross margin. Um, uh, quite good footprint, good f footprint in the Nordic area. Uh, so, so if we grow that company, of course, we're quite a, well, a very profitable business. So, so I would say that um, um, it is more of, a, of the of the deals we see, uh, and also um, what also our competence and know-how. I think industrial uh, businesses are are more Swedish-like companies. Um, also, all right. Thank you very much for that. That's all we have time for today. Thank you all for listening. Okay.